Hi, I'm Michael Odia, SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tekka Inc. And in this presentation, we're going to talk about using the file stream data type. This is part two of a two-part presentation, where in the first part, I covered uh, the basics of the file stream data type, as well as how you create databases that use them, and uh, tables that use them. In this presentation, we're going to have a quick uh, review of the SQL Server file stream data type, what it's all about. Then we're going to look at the databases and tables that use the file stream data type, and you'll see how you define one in a table. Then we'll get into the meat of this presentation, and we'll look at how you actually insert data into the file stream data type, how you insert character data, how you can insert binary data, and then how you can retrieve that data. Finally, we'll jump in and see how this is implemented on SQL Server. Uh, the file stream data type, basically, it's all about having high-performance blob access from the SQL Server engine itself. Here, blobs are stored in the file system, and then rows that reference those blobs have pointers in them, and those link those blobs, that blob storage, to the row in the relational database itself. And that allows SQL Server to maintain integrity between those two entities. So, for instance, if you back up your database, your blobs get backed up, too. So things don't get out of sync. Uh, blob support uh, can be very large for um, the file stream data type. It supports up to 16 terabytes using the NTF file system. And again, the big advantage of using this, you get the performance, but you also get data consistency and durability because of that linkage between the, the relational database and the blob itself. And SQL Server takes care of all that for you. So how do you create a file stream database? Uh, this is a quick review from the last presentation. Uh, the important part to notice is this file group where you have contains file stream. You do have to have the file stream support enabled on your SQL Server, but if you do, you can go ahead and just create a database, make sure that that's enabled, and when you do that, that will create a new file group for you that's used for the file stream support. Then, when you get ready to create a table, you use your same create table command. The table has to have a couple unique requirements. Uh, first of all, it has to have an ID field that is unique and not null. And that's what you see here in our first column that's labeled FSID. Um, and that's just a requirement for the file stream data type. And then when you go to actually define the, the blob data type itself, you define it as var binary max and you throw in uh, the file stream keyword and that's what allows SQL Server to know that this is a, um, a blob data type that's going to be stored in the file stream system. Okay now let's look at a couple examples of using the file stream data type. Here in this example I've got a couple code snippets, one an insert statement, another a select statement, and the insert statement is actually adding data into the table that I created that's using the file stream data type. And in that file stream data type, it's going to put uh, some text data. It's going to put in the values of my first uh, file stream data. And uh, in this case, we're casting that uh, character data as var binary so that we don't have a data mismatch. And we're using that new ID function to generate a new unique ID for our first uh, for our first column. So basically we've got a new ID for the first column, a brief descriptor, and then we're going to cast in some character data. After that, how do we get that back? Well, we use the select statement. We can use the cast statement again to pull that back, casting this time that blob data as a varchar data, and we're going to select it from um, the My File Stream table. And we'll see this in action in just a second. Now let's look at inserting and retrieving some binary data. Here it's a little bit different. Um, the insert, the first couple rows are the same. You're putting in the new ID to generate that, um, that uh, unique ID and, and then you're passing it as some character data. But what's different is to get that file stream data inserted, we are going to use the open row set function. And we're going to take the results of a select asterisk from open row set and we're going to pass the open row set the name of a, a binary file that's out there on the system. And in this case, it's c colon backslash temp print screen dot jpeg. We're going to pass it in the, the parameter of single blob. And then that open row set will take that and it will import that uh, print screen jpeg into our uh, file stream data field. 
Then when we want to go ahead and get it back, we can go ahead and do a select. And in this second example, you can just see this select is selecting the FS description and FS blob fields from the my data my file stream table, where that um, descriptor matches blob two. And in this case, um, it's going to since the data in that field is binary in the file stream data field, it will return some binary data. So anyway, that's the overview of it. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in and see what this looks like. Here we've got SQL Server Management Studio open. And remember our database that contained the file stream was my file stream DB. And we had a table out there that we defined called my file stream table. And that table had three columns in it. And right now, uh, there's nothing in this, so we're going to go ahead and run our queries. And here is our first query where we were going to go ahead and insert some character data into it. And again, we're just using the standard T-SQL insert statement, and we're casting the character data as var binary. So if we execute that, we can see that it appeared to have worked. Now we're going to go ahead and select it back from there, and we're going to select uh, that is the FS description field as well as that character data we, that we inserted, my first file stream data. So let's run our select statement. And there you can see the results of that. So we've got our description, blob one, and my first file stream. And our cast was the thing that brought that back. Now, let's go ahead and insert a binary object into it. And again, we don't have to use anything special. We don't have to go into C Sharp programming or ADO.net or any of that stuff. We can go ahead and use uh, our standard T-SQL insert statement. We're going to go ahead and insert the new ID. Um, function value in there for our for our ID field. Blob2 is our description. And in this case, we're using that open row set function, which uses that old ADB provider to go out and read a file that's in our file system in C colon temp, which is a, a print screen. It's going to read it in as a blog. So this will insert our binary data into the my file stream table. And we have got it inserted. You see that was pretty fast. It did that rapidly. Now let's go ahead and have a quick look at this from running uh, this field where we can select it in from where the FS description is on blob 2. And there you go. And in this case you see it's gone ahead and done the selection and since this data is binary it represents it as binary data. You may wonder what these things look like in the file system now that they've been inserted. So let's go ahead and open up File Explorer. And remember we put the the file stream file group down here in temp and there you, we can see it and that's the my file stream db uh, file stream file group it keeps a number of logs and then it creates long good names of directories for all of the different uh, files that are inserted out there so let's have a look inside this one and remember we inserted two different uh, files out there and one of those files was a text file and that would be this top one so let's go ahead and open that one and we'll use notepad and there's my first file stream data now the second one that was an image right it was a print screen so let's go ahead and open that one and we'll use paint this time and there you can see our image just exactly like it would have been if we had captured this in in paint so anyway that's how the file stream uh, data type stores its data And that's how you use the file stream data type. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.